All right, good afternoon, everybody. I am uh, coming outside on one of our first light snows of the year. And I wanna show you some of the progress that I've made over the past, well, it's been little progress here and there over the past couple of weeks. So I ended up getting that junction box hooked up of which you would have seen in my last video, R hooked up, unhooked, and then rewired. And for those of you watching and, and keeping track, yes, I did fix the cabling so that it is uh, at the correct polarity. But let me show you what I have gotten done outside in regards to the new solar arrays. So yeah, you can see the, the snow coming down, trying to stick. I took six of my panels and leaned them up against the fence on this side. And then if I turn over here along the side of the mud room, uh, I put six more over here. And I, I went through and I built the racks and everything and I bought all the hardware that I thought I would need to build these racks for all the panels. But apparently for some reason my mind was just thinking that, oh, well, six of these panels is the same size as one of these. I don't know where I was thinking that. And even when I told my wife that I didn't get enough lumber, she looked at me and said, yeah, because you bought enough for three. So even she knew, so I don't know where my mind was. But, so I have to get the last three um, put on a rack, and you can see here exactly why I don't want them just leaning up against the fence. Uh, because the, the, especially in the wintertime, the snow hits them and then it ends up piling down in front. And all this snow, if I leave these leaning up against the fence, all this snow is just going to end up piling and I have to shovel it away from the panels. So at least here it gives me a little bit of space to where I don't have to worry about cleaning the snow off the panels one time is not going to pile them up and then end up blocking the panels. Plus, it's probably not good for them to just to be sitting on the ground anyways. But, so I built these these racks at 35 degree angle, which, based on what I have, have found out, is supposed to be a decent angle if you're not adjusting your panels for the sun for the time of year. But I wanted to also play around with, with angling them a little bit to see if that was gonna help me get any more solar, even during the winter time. Or if nothing else, it'll help keep the snow off the panels. So I think I'm gonna end up building little, I don't know, little boots or something that's gonna slide up underneath these skids that will allow me to tip the panels even more. And then should I feel the need, I could actually take the skids and slide them to the front and then tip the panels more flat during the summertime. But I still have to go through and do that, figure out exactly how high I need to build them. I'll probably do them for, for one rack and then see how it how it comes out. But let me bring you over to the junction box so you know I've got my lines right here on the ground. I'm gonna end up putting them in conduit. Uh, just, they're running on the ground here, right in front of the slab, and then running back into this area behind my air conditioner. And again, yes, I know, it's, it's all spooled, but this is testing for me right now. But I've got the pair of uh, the two sets of 600 watt panels paralleling into here into the back set and then I ended up splitting one of my I ended up splitting the long array along the fence line into two separate arrays so here's that second string And then I have the option for a third one, 
um, at some point. But I'd have to hook up another charge controller, one of my Victrons, in order to do that. So, I believe... I believe if I recall, I put these three into their own string and then those four down there into their own string. And this is the little tree that, especially during the fall time, when the leaves start, uh, start to change colors, the angle of the sun is just right to where the tree's shadow just kind of moves along this entire section here. And so splitting it up really helps uh, increase my productivity because it's not killing an entire string when the, the shade ends up um, when the shade ends up crossing one of those panels and actually uh, the panels on the roof up there this was the first I, I think we might have had an inch inch and a half of snow but this was the first time that, since I've had the big panels on the roof, that I've had to clear them off. And I have one of those snow rakes, for a roof rake, and that worked well. I still had to get on the ladder and pull all the snow off, but I forgot. That's a lot more snow than covering the panels than I had last winter, so I'm going to have a huge pile end up dumping right here, which I'm going to have to keep clean and I'm going to have to watch the snow load from coming off of those panels and hitting this bottom panel so I need to be aware of that too when I clean them all off all right well if you can't tell my hand's shaking so I'm heading back inside and I'll show you hooking up everything downstairs and show you that I did correctly fix my polarity problem on my new strings all right, you can see down here, we've got another breaker. I did actually pull all these off and try and re-level this because it was canted up and it was driving me nuts. And if you do notice now, you know, we've got black and green here and black and green up here. It's because I'm moving the arrays around to run a different test for figuring out another issue but you can see my, my polarities on all these are correct. So red to red, black to black, uh, red here, black, red, black, red, black. So that's all correct. No more switching the lines around. So on a perfectly sunny day, I have potential to pull in, what, 6,200 watts of solar? But that's not gonna be in the winter time. <laughs> So it's going to be interesting to see, though, uh, this winter, what do we end up having as, a, as an average for solar production? I know we're going to get a little more reflected solar coming off the snow, but I know we've got more cloudy days than sun. So we shall see. But that's the beauty of, of the way I have things set up with having the grid being the grid backup because I can run on battery power until my batteries get down to a certain percentage and then it'll switch over to grid seamlessly and even last night it did it again I think my batteries right now because of the consistent 64 watt drain overnight I think my batteries are down to 27 percent this morning so they're back up to around 30 right now with a little bit of sun that we've got but I was sitting down watching TV and there was just the faintest of a flicker. And I checked solar resistant and sure enough, it switched over to the grid. So I love that aspect. I don't have to worry about it. It just doesn't. Now, if we can just figure out these other little quirks, I'd be a super happy camper.